my return load is a similar uh, SPMT, only it's a much smaller one. Uh, only four axles, and each axle has four big tires, right? And it's only about 35,000 pounds. Uh, so I'm taking it back to Canada. Evidently, they, uh, they got a wrong one. They really needed this one that I brought. And you see, that's how they can be connected all together. So they can build kind of like a train out of these uh, trailers and haul very heavy stuff. And the one I brought was used, uh, is going to be used to move uh, some big transformer. And that's what it looks like on the top. See, that's how they loaded it with a crane. It's all solid steel. Solid piece of machinery. And today is the happy day in my uh, max life. Look at the column. You see I dismantled half of the truck. Here's what's happening. Well, there's no key. Oh yeah, the key is in uh, power on, but not starting, right? I turn the turn indicator, right? It blips. You hear the sound. And this thing, everything works. This one, and this one, right? Everything perfect. If we we turn the key like this, see no power. Power goes off. It still works. Everything is beautiful. Now, as soon as I turn the key into the on position, like I'm prepared to drive, see it goes through uh, all these fancy diagnostics, right? Acqui acquiring data gives me all these annoying noises, and then it says no maintenance items due and now look on the left screen see that little indicator right it's not supposed to be there and what that means is that now my left signal is on constantly and the same with that uh, tiny one over there on the left side of the door and it blinks and i try to disconnect it uh, disconnecting it nothing works and if i turn the Indicator down, nothing happens. No sound, no blinking. If I turn it this way, right one, right one works, but no sound. <laughs> That's why I went to the ITA here, and they say, and they said, uh, drop your trailer, or you have a big trailer. I said, no, guys, I'm not dropping the trailer because I know your story is gonna be, go to the dealer. Right, because that's what happens, uh, and that's uh, freeway over there. So basically, that, that's what happens. Uh, okay, where's our zoom? That's what happens 90% uh, of the time. Oh, always on. Yeah, 90% of the time, what happens is that they say, uh, "Well, we cannot fix it. Go to the dealer." Uh, like, what am I supposed to do, right? Gotta, gotta, gotta find a dealer, and I doubt I'll find someone open today. But these guys cannot fix it, right? I cannot sit here because there's no one to fix it. You have to go to the dealer. So, so basically, we'll be looking for the dealer, like in that movie. Remember the Jurassic Park? when that uh, husband and wife and, uh, on a false pretext to uh, hire this uh, dinosaur expert and then when they tell him the truth when they're on the island that guy says uh, that's it we're going to the to the to the beach because that's the safest place and they and they're leaving this couple in the middle of this jungle right and there's another armed guy who is supposed to be like a protector defender and the, the husband, the, the wife looks at the husband and says, so what are we going to do now? And they, they turn to this armed um, professional and they say, what, what are we doing? Like, because those guys, the expert and his friend are leaving for the shore, right? So these guys, they don't know anything about this uh, flora, fauna, these dinosaurs. And the, <laughs> the, the defender says, 
we're gonna be looking for your son in the direction they are going <laughs> and the husband says good idea so they run after the the dinosaur expert you know basically towards salvation and they're gonna be looking for their son in that direction so that's what I'm gonna be doing now a yellow Peterbilt there over there all right and we lost it that's that was a ramp I think the exit ramp entrance ramp and it's not cold today as you can see by the look by how these guys dressed and this is New York we're somewhere near not too far from Batavia but uh, it's Pembroke Pembroke New York so I called the uh, customs broker I gave him the number and in the middle there's the word PARS P-A-R-S because that's like pre-authorized pre-approved uh, arrival system whatever it's that's what it's called a PARS sticker and that word PARS the four letters are in the middle of between two sets of numbers so I read the left group of numbers and then the right group of numbers and I say this is it and the guy says well you know it seems like kind of short I cannot find it so he starts looking and you know puts me on hold and then comes back on after like five minutes and says uh, are you sure about the number like what exactly does it say and I said well it says this then there's the word pars and then there's this six digits and he says ah that's why you should say the word that they should say pars pars is part of the numbers Jesus. so I used to, when I work for Landstar we had different stickers it just said pars and then a whole bunch of numbers and you just you just use those numbers you don't say the word pars weird anyway I hope this guy doesn't have the same problem as me with uh, lights because all his lights seem to be working perfectly fine and you know I always uh, laugh in, inside my head about guys that use so many lights because, because yeah it looks cool <laughs> but one thing some of them don't realize is that when you have lights see like those over there on top he has like 125 lights if you have lights they must be working so if you start at a DOT at a, like a scale for an inspection and the guy asks you to turn on all your lights and he walks around the trailer and he finds one light that's dead then you get a ticket okay so if it's in there it must be working so that's why you want to have as few lights as possible <laughs> To, to reduce the chance of getting a ticket it's just you know the practical uh, practical uh, way of uh, of course it looks great right in the dark it looks like a moving Christmas tree uh, you know I like seeing those on the highway but me myself I just have a basic basic amount of lights and now we're waiting for some guy my dispatch said there's a load uh, uh, north of Toronto that goes to Houston, Texas. I said, yeah, I want to go. I want to finally go somewhere where it's warm. And that would be a perfect, you know, time to wash the truck. But that customer disappeared somewhere. The dispatch cannot find him. And so that load is not there. So Tom Tom says uh, 192 kilometers, or uh, basically 100 miles, 110 miles towards uh, Cambridge, Ontario. So it's about 50 miles to the border or 40 miles to the border in a peace bridge and then I jump over and from there it's 100 miles or 160 kilometers to, to Cambridge and that's gonna be my video for today. That's a quick update for you. Uh, guys and girls, stay warm.